Before the activity proper, the teacher had her classroom routine. The prayer, greetings, and checking of attendance. Good morning, class. Before we proceed to our main discussion for today, let's have first a recapitulation of what were the things that we have discussed yesterday. Anyone can tell what is fiction? You, Julia? Very good. Now, what are the different types of fiction, lads? That's right. Now, can you give me examples of the different types of fiction that you have just watched or read, Jared? Very good. You became knowledgeable of the things that we have discussed yesterday. And today, we are going to unravel another interesting lesson. But before that, let's have first an activity. This is called Visualize Me. What you are going to do is to listen carefully to the excerpt that I am going to read. So this is entitled The Polar Express by Chris Evan Alsberg. So listen very carefully because you are going to visualize what is the gift that the boy received in the story. So you are going to draw the object in your clean sheet of paper with your coloring materials with you. You can do the activity within 10 minutes and your 10 minutes starts now. Thank you so much for your participation. This time, let's answer the following questions. How did you find the activity? Did you find difficulty in picturing out the boy's gift after listening? Paolo? Alright, now what technique did you use to identify the boy's gift, Carla? Very good. Now, have you considered your sensory experience while listening? What senses did you use, James? Very good. Now, in literature, what do you call the descriptive language that uses the five senses to create mental images in the reader's and listener's mind? You got it right. Our lesson for today is all about sensory images. With that, here are our learning objectives. At the end of the 60-minute period, you will be able to identify the different types of sensory images being used in the text, demonstrate understanding through participating to a group activity, and lastly, write an essay applying sensory images. Sensory images. This are literary device that includes the use of descriptive language in order to create mental representations or mental images. Now, from the word itself, sensory, it uses our five senses, the sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, in order to engage with the reader's and listener's mind. Now, there are different types of sensory images. First, we have visual imagery. So, from the word itself, visual, it uses our sense of sight. Now, this is what we can see, including the visual descriptions, no? So, it includes physical attributes such as color, the size, the shape, the lightness and darkness, the shadows, and the shape. Now, consider these examples. As she stepped out of the office building, she thought the bright, beaming sunlight would blind her. Immediately, she began rummaging through her purse for her Tom Ford shades. Because of the words bright, beaming sunlight, that makes the sentence a visual imagery as it uses our sense of sight in order to understand the sentence. Also, in the next example, his phone signaled immediately, setting his teeth on edge. He looked at the cracked scene, saw her name, and slapped the phone back down on his desk. Because of the word... Um, cracked scene, saw her name, that makes it visual imagery. The next one is we have auditory imagery. Obviously, it uses our sense of hearing for us to understand the text that we read. Now, onomatopoeia and alliteration are the literary devices that can help us create a sound in writing. So, that's a tip. Now, any noise, enjoyable sounds, or even the lack of noise, the peaceful calm, the eerie silence are all part of the auditory imagery. Consider these examples. She awoke to the chirping of birds and the soft whisper of a breeze as it passed through the tree outside her window. So for, because of the word chirping of birds, that creates a sound. 
and we can visualize the sound from the text. That makes the sentence auditory imagery. Next, we have tactile imagery. So it describes what we feel or touch. Obviously, it uses our sense of touch. So it includes textures, various sensations, and temperature um, variations. Now, consider these examples. A gust of cold wind pierced her body. So gust of cold wind, we can really feel the coldness of the wind in a sentence. That is why it is tactile imagery. Next, we have olfactory imagery. It makes use of our sense of smell for us to understand what we read or what we listen. So it includes fragrances such as perfumes, interesting food, blooming flowers, and the like. And also it touches odors. So from the examples, the words sweet aroma of the freshly baked chocolate chip cookies, the smelled um, scent of sweet hibiscus. Those are sensory words that we can imagine no? using our sense of smell. So that's olfactory imagery. The last one is we have the gustatory imagery. Of course, it utilizes our sense of taste for us to understand the text. Now, it includes the five basic tastes, the sour, bitter, sweet, salty, and of course, the textures and sensations that are also um, associated with eating. For the examples, as he bit into the juicy burger, a variety of spices dance upon his tongue. Imagine how delicious the burger is based from the statement. And then the ca candy melted in her mouth and swirls of bittersweet chocolate and slightly sweet but salty caramel blended together on her tongue. So that is an example of gustatory imagery. You became eligible of what are sensory images and their different types. Now I want you to answer the following questions. From the discussion that we had, what do you think is the significance of learning the different types of sensory images? Correct. Now how do sensory images help in having a more creative and engaging oral and written work? That's right. Now, can, how can this knowledge be made useful as a 21st century learner? Thank you so much. To demonstrate your understanding about our topic, let's have an activity. This is called Haunt the Imagery. This time, I want you to go back to your group before, and then you are given a handout of the different literary pieces coming from the different Authors. So what you're going to do is to hunt the words that represent the sensory images in the literary text and indicate what types of sensory images are being used. So write them in a clean sheet of paper. You can do the activity within 15 minutes. And after that one, you're going to choose one representative to share your output to the class and explain thoroughly why you came up with those haunted words and their corresponding sensory images. And you are graded according to the scoring rubrics presented on the screen. For content accuracy, you are given 10 points. And then for clarity of ideas, you have 10 points. For the organization of your thought, thoughts, you have 5 points. And then for grammar convention, that includes 5 points for a total of 30 points. You can do the activity now. Alright, you are now good at hunting imagery. This time, let's have your assessment. Travel with your senses. What you are going to do is in 200 words, write an essay of your most unforgettable travel. Don't forget to use sensory images in your essay. You are graded according to the scoring rubrics presented on the screen. For the first criterion, we have the content. Your essay should contain 10 and more sensory images with illustrative content demonstrating strong development and sophisticated ideas. Next, we have the focus. Your essay should be focused, purposeful, and also reflects clear mental representation of ideas. And then we have organization. Your essay should be sophisticated or should have sophisticated arrangement of content with five or more subtle transitions. 
And then for the language use, style, and conventions, your essay should be effective and creative with the use of elements of style to enhance the meaning. And it should also use correct grammar, spelling, punctuation throughout with very few errors. Right? You can do your assessment now. For your assignment, you are going to read the excerpt of the different literary pieces coming from the different authors. And then identify the different types of sensor images being used in the excerpt. Now, in five sentences, you are going to justify your answers through explaining why you come up with those different types of sensory images. Then, submit that one on our next meeting. You are graded according to the scoring rubrics, of course. For the content, it should contain clear explanation of the sensor images being used. That's 10 points. And then for grammar and conventions, you are given 10 points for that. For a total of 20 points. Alright, am I understood? Okay. Thank you so much, class, for listening. I hope that you have